Hi everyone, uh, Salty Patrick here. Today's video, yeah, it's not Patrick, it is Salty Patrick because today's video, it will be five of my least favorite tropes. There are still other tropes other than these five that I often dislike, but every time someone says that, what's your uh, least favorite tropes? These five always come to my mind, especially in fantasy, sci-fi, and sometimes historical fiction because those are the three genre that I usually read. I don't read much outside of those three genre. So there is always the possibility that these tropes I'm going to mention are executed much better and more frequently in other genre. That could be the case. And again, I need to remind you all that even though these are five of my least favorite tropes, this is my opinion. And again, these are not absolutes. There are cases where these tropes are actually executed really well to the narrative. There are cases like that. But before we get to the salty content, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. As always, I'm glad to be collaborating with Skillshare again. For those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community. And on Skillshare, there are thousands of classes on topics such as illustration, graphic design, book design, photography, animation, music production, video making, and many more. Today, I want to give a recommendation to the class I took, and it is Illustrated Lettering, Design a Book Cover with Jessica Hishke. In my previous sponsored video with Skillshare, I recommended a class about interior design. Today, it will be about designing cover art. This is a great class that tells the entire process of a cover design. There is a lot of things to consider from research, audience, sketch, choosing colors, and more. This class would be helpful for anyone who wants to learn more about an example of how the cover design of a book is made. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in my description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get back to the salty content now. And the first trope that I want to mention here is miscommunication trope. There is no doubt that miscommunication is one of the things that I dislike most in fantasy books. I, I mean, on some degree, I do understand that miscommunication sometimes needs to happen between characters. I mean, strangers who just met cannot easily trust each other Always, you, you cannot do that, that doesn't make sense. And there are definitely benefits to using miscommunication in your story. It can create tension and it can create anticipation. But as always, if you use this too much to create drama and conflict, you use it all the time, then it's lazy. Not only it's lazy, it's infuriating and it gets boring really fast. If you use miscommunication as the biggest driving factor of your story for hundreds of pages, or maybe for one whole book, or in some cases for one whole series, well, that's, that's just insane. And you know what series I'm talking about, right? It is The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan and, well, Brandon Sanderson. I haven't got to his books yet. Oh, by the way, this video won't be me dissing about The Wheel of Time because I actually love the first two books in The Wheel of Time. But some parts of the content, and especially my expectation and reading behavior, has prevented me from continuing with the series after The Shadow Rising. So again, as I said, I love the first two books. I think The Great Hunt, the climax sequence in The Great Hunt especially, was amazing. Yes, there were flaws in the first two books, but they, they didn't drive me nuts yet. After I got to the third book, The Dragon Reborn, I'm, uh, the miscommunication trope and the repetitiveness of the storyline have started to really aggravate me. And after I got to The Shadow Rising, which is often praised as the best book in The Wheel of Time that's written uh, solo by Robert Jordan. So the last three books, which is uh, The Gathering Storm, Tower of Midnight, and A Memory of Light doesn't count. And yeah, a lot of fans actually told me that The Shadow Rising was absolutely amazing. So because of this, uh, my expectations toward The Shadow Rising was so high. It was so high, and when I got to it, well, the miscommunication trope just got worse and it felt more repetitive and The Shadow Rising is a massive book. Another example where a miscommunication trope re really ruined the quality of the book is The Last Mortal Bond by uh, Brian Staffley. This is the third book in the Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy. I won't lie, uh, I've mentioned how much I love Skullsworn and how much I love The Empire's Ruin. But honestly, before I got to reading uh, Skullsworn, and The Empire's Ruin, which I absolutely love. But before that, even though I really enjoyed The Emperor's Blade and The Providence of Fire, which is the first two books in the Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy, but the tropes, the miscommunication trope that was used for about 200 or 300 pages, 
and uh, The Last Mortal Bond really decreased the quality of the trilogy for me, especially because The Last Mortal Bond is the last book in the trilogy. And again, I'm not totally against the use of miscommunication, and even though this is one of my least favorite tropes, sometimes it needs to happen. And the characters, the one uh, that's the participants of the miscommunication trope, usually have really clear and understandable motivation on why they are so mistrustful of each other. But again, as always, if you use a trope or a plot device too much, it gets boring, it felt lazy, and it's infuriating. The second trope that I want to mention is resurrection. I'm not gonna lie about it, resurrection is one of my least favorite tropes. It is one of the tropes that could easily, very easily, kill the tension of a story, sometimes an entire series, really quickly. Just like miscommunication, I think this can be done really well. I cannot give an example of this. I don't think I can give one because, uh, well, resurrection is usually a spoiler. <laughs> And again, just like miscommunication trope, I'm not totally against it, but an author have to be really careful before they decide to resurrect a character. If it fits the world building and it fits the lore, and maybe it is totally possible to resurrect a character, then yeah, I guess on some degree I could understand that. But then again, even if you do that, that will still decrease the tension of the story. It will decrease the tension of the story. One of the things I love most about A Song of Ice and Fire is how many permanent deaths are in the storyline. It is also one of the things I love most about The Faithful and the Fallen and Of Blood and Bone. If a character dies, well, that's it. They're gone. I am usually not a fan of a fantasy series or fantasy book where say there's a deadly and big war happening and somehow, and somehow all the good guys just manage to survive the war without any casualty. That is quite unbelievable. <laughs> And if there is a resurrection trope happening, the next time a major character die, there is a possibility that the reader won't feel too sad about it because, well, they will think that maybe this character will just get resurrected uh, later in the series. Yeah, it has happened to me quite a lot of times and again, I cannot give an example for this because this will be considered spoilers. But there is this sci-fi series, the main villain has been killed and then the next series in the sci-fi series resurrect that main villain. And I'm like, what? Why? Don't you have another villain? And the thing is, the series do have more compelling villains. But then again, the author decided to resurrect this particular villain and I'm just like, why? Why do you do this? And I'm still not sure whether the continuation will be able to redeem uh, this particular plot device for me or not. I guess I just have to find out when the book is released. And I think if you have read this series and you know my reading taste, I think you will know which series I'm talking about here. And just to give a hint, it's not a complete resurrection, but technically it is still the same main villain. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about this, but if you know about this series, let's just say that this resurrection trope absolutely doesn't work for me. The third trope that I want to mention is, well, Love Triangle. It won't come as a surprise, right, that this will appear on my list. In general, a lot of fantasy books with romance in it are already something that doesn't work for me. And this is not because I don't like romance in books. I think a character having a loved ones and then this character have a desire to protect them at all costs and it felt genuine, it felt palpable to me, it's always amazing. But the issue is, is that a lot of romance that I've read so far in fantasy books just doesn't work. A lot of them felt infuriating or forced, especially when it's done in a lot of pages. Now you add a love triangle to that, it gets much worse. Can love triangle actually work? Yes, it can. It can, to a degree it can. A lot of the times readers who read about a love triangle will have a preference. They will think that I want this character to end up with this one and there is an anticipation in that. There is anticipation and there is satisfaction when that actually happens. But then again, when that doesn't happen, it could actually immediately ruin a series for that particular reader. I've heard about it from many readers and also I kinda have experienced it as well. I was so grateful when The Love Triangle in The Well of Ascension and uh, Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson, both of them are by Brandon Sanderson if you don't know. And in those two books, there were an almost love triangle happening and not gonna lie, I was so close to being pissed off by it, but thankfully it didn't happen. I personally think that love triangle is so infuriating to it because it is kinda like a form of cheating, like come on, make up your mind already. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes it's hard to explain because love is a very personal thing and I think that's also one of the reasons why a lot of fantasy readers can feel infuriated by romance really fast because as I said, at least from my experience, the fantasy books that I've read, 
uh, a lot of the romance just doesn't work for me. So that's why romance in general, especially love triangle, in fantasy books often doesn't work. I do have one really great example where this situation actually happened and it kinda worked for a lot of people, but I think it can be considered spoiler. So, so right now the example that I can give is only The Well of Ascension and Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. Let's just say that the almost love triangle in that two books, if that ends up happening, it would piss me off. The fourth trope that I want to mention is Deus Ex Machina. I have talked about this in my Heart vs Soft Magic video, so I'm going to keep this one really short. But basically, a deuce ex machina is when a character managed to get out of a situation by using magic or maybe solutions that appeared out of nowhere. Same with the previous tropes I just mentioned, there is a case where this actually worked. And again, I will give the same example that I mentioned in my Heart vs Soft Magic video and it is The God of Prayer by Gareth Hanrahan. The God of Prayer uses a deuce ex machina to solve a situation and somehow it just worked. It felt epic and it felt fitting to the narrative. But again, deus ex machina is really dangerous to use because it felt lazy and sometimes if a character managed to get out of a dangerous situation too easily, well, that just kills the tension and it felt so unsatisfying. I don't like that. I don't like it when that happens. And the last least favorite trope I'm going to mention in this video is, I, I don't actually know the name of this trope, but I'm going to give an example of the book. It is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. And if you have followed my Goodreads review for years, then you know that I think of this book as quite likely the worst book that I've ever read. I despise this book with every inch of my being. And one of the main reasons why I really dislike this book is that it has a lot of the things that I dislike in reading. But the thing that drives me insane the most is when a character usually somehow end up being the love interest, constantly treat the main character like garbage, sometimes even less than garbage. And that happens in Uprooted. I still don't get why the romance happened. For the entire book, the love interest constantly treats the main heroine like she is garbage. And they end up falling in love. No, 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 no. They, they doesn't even fall in love. It just kind of happened. It just felt like they kind of, okay, you know what? You have mocked me so much. I'm going to kiss you now. What? What? That is insane. Fifty Shades of Grey is more believable than this. I, I just cannot. I cannot with this trope. I cannot. Seriously, if you use this trope, it is quite likely I'm going to hate your book. If this is a form of dating tactics that I don't understand, then I don't want to understand. I don't get how a main character that's constantly being treated so badly somehow just fall in love with that character. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And yes, I will say this again, Uprooted is probably the worst book that I've ever read. I will still give Spinning Silver a try because a lot of people, a lot of people I know who actually dislike Uprooted said that they love Spinning Silver. So. That is a very positive sign for me. And as usual, I don't like to immediately dismiss an author just from reading one book. So maybe this is just a one-time bad case thing, and maybe Spinning Silver and other book by Naomi Novik somehow ended up working for me. That could end up happening. I usually give an author two books a try before I decided to completely dismiss their work. So yeah, those are five of my least favorite tropes. And again, these are just my opinions. And there is a possibility that any of these tropes can be utilized really well depending on the storyline and the series. Let me know whether you agree or not with these tropes and maybe you can give a better example of it. And do let me know some of your least favorite tropes. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye bye!